Mr. Uh, Candy Cane. Ah, it is you. Ah, very good, very good, tis you. Oh, Great. is that you, Cole? Yes, it's me, yes. Oh, how are you, friend? Uh, good, good. Is this your lady partner here behind you? No, no, I don't know this wench. Oh. Off with <laughs> you, wench. <laughs> That's the way. Uh, I, um, I would like to uh, talk to you for a while. Perhaps even take a little trip uh, up to the uh, oil refinery, your office. Yes, um, of course. You want to go talk at uh, the Waypan gunsmith? Um, well, I, I need to uh, help a friend very quickly. He's extremely hurt, and uh, I need to send telegram. Oh. Um, if you want okay, to... Okay, you want me to wait for you at the gunsmith? Uh, if you could, just for a few minutes, and then yes, I will yes, I will be I'll right with you. I'll wait upstairs in the private room, sir. Okay, good. Very good. Very good. No All right. problem. I'll see you there. I hope your friend's okay. Yeah, he, he's okay. He was hurt a few days ago, but uh, he's having difficulty moving his arm, so it's a little bit worrisome. Uh, Okay. And young Haseo. Okay. Sajan Sajan Nim. Sa 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 um, this is Korea. It's very difficult to read. Sajang Nim. Sa Jang Nim. Yes, I think I got it. Don't know yeah. who that is. No, it I it's a it's like a Mr. a respectful term for Mr. Ko. No. Okay. So so for you I would say like uh, uh, hello, Pali Sajangnim. I think I so. Know. It's Korean, it's not my language. Okay, good. Good, good, good. All coming together. Sorry, excuse me, sorry. Oh my god, what is up with all these horses? Niho. Oh, I forgot the telegram. Dr. O'Hara, shit. J three three three.
I'm Rosi Ao Yo Ojala. Just now, me to all tries before not reaching out sooner. We had things that made a day time or tea difficult. I do remember with uh, fun our chance meeting and shop and your interest in a few puncture. In that note, I believe I have someone who could benefit from this natural medicine. Hey. Would you have the time and interest to stop by? We need to check on you from time to time and make sure you are okay. Oh my god, this horse! What is he doing? Not doing anything, he's doing something clean. <laughs> There's come back in. Oh, here he is now. Yep, I've telegrammed Dr. O'Hara. Yeah, what kind of catnip are you smoking out in the desert? Only the best, of course. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, kind of just to be to be clear, I've not shared anything to do with your visions. Just mentioned that you were having one more regularly. It's yes. not my place to share them. Okay. Yep. Well, this one. Speaking of, uh, Eddie, you have time. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Okay. Um, it's a man uh, upstairs. Candy Kane is waiting for me. Would you like to go talk yeah, to him? Yeah. Um, yeah, we can do. Is he in Bastille or the tea room? He's in the tea room. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, me and Yuri bumped into him at the telegram office. Had a few pleasantries, but I've not spoke to him a lot. Okay. Uh, McMuffin, I don't know if Dr. Ohana is around today or not, but I think uh, this issue with you is not going to be something that can be solved very, very quickly either. Might take uh, some time and some patience and uh, some pain. Uh, but I have seen people with similar injury uh, unable to move the arm and uh, through certain methods of acupuncture, massage, these things were able to recuperate to some degree. Don't uh, give up hope, all right? But uh, I can't do it myself. 
Dr. O'Hara is a doctor that might be able to help. <clears throat> well, we'll see what she can do, I guess. Or he. She. Very oh, pity. Wow, he. Yeah. She. A very pity lady, doctor. <laughs> exactly what you'd need, Donald, I'm sure. <clears throat> yeah, all right. Um, I have to step away for a little bit. Are you going to be around uh, this area or at the gun shop? Or... Yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be away for a while. Okay, all right. I'll see you soon. Ready. Ready. Before we talk to this man, I wanted to tell you one one thing. Okay. Next time I see a uh, Dongway, Doggo. Yeah. Hold up, hold up. Next time I see Doggo, Dongway, I'm going to request something from him. Okay. I'm not going to tell you more at this time, but I'm going to basically request that you become my right hand man. If you would no. do me the honor of accepting. Oh, I don't really know what to say, guys. You know, I've been... I've been deliberate in not trying to understand things that are not for me to understand, at least not yet, or, or at all. There's been many a thing that I know that there's a lot to learn within Taipan and... Well, I'd... Yes. I'd uh, be happy to do anything you, you need me to do, as always. Um, if this request is uh, allowed, the doors would open wide for you. All your questions could be answered in due time. I understand. And, um, thank you. Yeah, well, thank you. All right, so I plan to talk. Uh, let's feel him out a little bit more. Uh, you did not meet this man yesterday. I did talk to him for quite some time. Yeah, and, uh, I'd exchange pleasantries. Seems like a very grand gentleman, but other than that, don't know a lot about him. Yeah. I need to know if he's the type that will go to law. Yeah, that's important. Maybe not to step too deep in the puddle before we know that. Yeah. It's a difficult thing to find out. Yeah. Perhaps a history lesson of his life might be nice. Ah, there he is. I'm so sorry. I kept you waiting. Let yeah, me. No uh... problem at all, fellow. You know, friends come first in this kind of world. Well, yeah, this friend is hurt too, so I'm trying to get him a good doctor who can help him with his arm um, problems. Have you, you've met Freddy mm -hmm. here, yes? Yes, I just met him before, Freddy, yes. Hey, very good. Good to see you again, sir. Good to see you, Freddy. Could I uh, perhaps get you a, a mug of tea? Oh, yes, I'd love a cup of tea, yes. Good. I'll, um, I'll look after that guy, you sit down. All right. All right, so, Mr. Candy King, we had a yes. conversation yesterday in the mines. Yes, um, and, about gun oil. Yes, well, about gun oil, but also, um, well, you'll find out in a minute. Uh, in this room, though, let me say, let's uh, let's keep our voices quiet, yes? It looks, yes, 
It looks like a very strong building with thick brick walls, but in actuality, it's very poorly made. The whispers yeah. sometimes can be heard uh, racing through the entire uh, store. Yes, no problem, no problem. I'll whisper for you. Thank you, thank you. All right. Um, can, before we continue on this, I would like to, if you would allow me, uh, uh, know a little bit more about you. Uh, how you got here to the crossing. What is it that you have done in the past, uh, work-wise and uh, whatever? W would you be so kind as to uh, tell me your story? Me is no problem. Well, my name is Reginald Candy Cane. You know that. Um, it's a family name, you know. My great-great-grandfather, he owned a small confectionery store here in St. Denis, long closed now. And, um, you know, Thank my... You. Uh, my father's father, uh, his name was Richard, Richard Candy Cane. He uh, started a small uh, mining company up there near uh, Annisburg and such. And, you know, he wasn't that big time, you know, he did, you know, enough to keep the family alive. And my father, you know, he had great aspirations to push our family forward, you know, to, so we could have the finer things in life and such. So um, he took forward the, the mining business and started paying fellows to do the mining for us so that uh, we could, you know, live a high society life. That's when he sent me off to England, Shire, and Africa, and France to learn and be educated. And sadly, once my father passed away, I had to come back to America to take over the family business. And that's when I've moved uh, our operations to the oil refinery there, just outside of Valentine. And I've been stockpiling coal for coal deliveries and such, and mining myself to find some precious gems and rubies and such. You know how it is. Yes, Whereabouts yes. uh, in England are you from, Candy Cane? Well, I sensed a bit of the accent before. I'm not from England, my boy. My father shipped me off there when I was only five. I, oh, I, I studied see. in Brighton for a small time and then moved to <laughs> Londonshire. Yeah, I know. I'm from uh, London myself. Ew, South uh, by the docks. But I'm aware of Brighton. Never been, but a lovely seaside town from what I understand. Yes, Brighton by the sea, that's what they said. Yes, I lived in England for about, so I'd say, from when I was five to, oh God, I was probably 30. And in between then, I was going in between, you know, going to France and Africa on wild safaris and such. <laughs> Sounds like a wonderful upbringing. Yes. So would you say you're, you come from family of means? A wealthy family? Yes, I'd, I'd say wealthy enough, you know, and I, I definitely have increased the profit margins, we should say. Uh, since taking over the family business, I do think my father was swandling money on things like booze and such, and women uh, and things like that. Mm -hmm. I don't Did have you, those kind uh, of proclivities. You know, I like a good cognac, but I know not to buy a thousand dollars worth. Yeah, of course. Would you, um, uh, excuse me if this is a wrong uh, line of questioning, or if you believe this to be too personal, but would you say that perhaps your, uh, your family have always been of high means, or... Hard work and dedication got them there. I'd say hard work and dedication, to be honest. Like I said, my my great-great-grandfather, I don't know much of him. All I know is that's why we're called the Candy Canes, because he had a small confectionery business, you know. But I don't really know <laughs> how sense. he got the money to open that store, you know. It's a long time ago now. Yeah, I can imagine. Good work pays off, and uh, hard work pays off the most. Yes, indeed. So, oh, Mr. Candy Cane, uh, you yourself, I guess your your family is probably not here any longer, is that correct? Yes, my father suddenly passed away about ten years ago. Uh, I see. And uh, and uh, how are you doing uh, financially? Is it uh, good business? Are you satisfied? Oh, very good or... business at the moment. Every single day I'm pulling in about one and a half to three thousand dollars. Every day, that is not bad. Every not day, bad. yes. Hmm. Tell me, what what do you right. um, what do you think of the laws here in the crossing? Well, you know what, fellows, I wasn't that big of a problem with the law myself. I, you know, if I ever got robbed or something, I knew I could go talk to them. But I had a little incident the other day in Annisburg. I was mining, topping up the coal reserves. I heard a lot of gunshots happening, so of course old Reginald here thought about escaping, you know, slipping out the back door as you will. And I got captured by one of the outlaws, held by gunpoint and was used as a hostage to 
negotiate the, the release of one of their friends. And of course, at this time, you know, I'm thinking, fuck these guys trying to, you know, use me as a pawn in their tools. But eventually they got their fellow away and I was trapped in a cage with a lawman and all was good until we got let out. And one of the lawmen that had been shot and was on the floor, he started saying things like, shut the fuck up to me and to fuck off. And then they paid someone a hundred dollars to get me to leave Annisburg. They didn't want my statement or anything. I heard all the fellows' names and recognized all their faces. But you know what? I told the Lord to go fuck themselves. They asked me for a mm. statement later down the line. I said, oh, I'm sorry. I seem to have forgotten everything. Uh, oh. Sorry to hear that. It's um, unfortunately um, more of a regular occasion than perhaps the civilians of the crossing would like. Uh, yes, I would say the law very choosy on which, uh, you know, crimes they wish to investigate, usually the easy ones. I would agree. I think perhaps the law are uh, damaged by their want of reputation. They uh, <laughs> certainly enjoy the idea of catching the uh, the named criminals in the newspapers and such. Often yes. it's difficult for them to care for the common man. Yes, and that is kind of where... Uh we may be able to step in caring for the common man and lady of course um yes of course mr cornwall you know of him no i i i rent the building like i told you before Cole. i rent the building i've never met mr cornwall personally but i'm sure i'd be able to probably procure some information about him can i ask uh, yeah. mr Carnicane, you um when you say you rent the building, this is in regards to your cold. Yes, my cold delivery business, yes. Because yeah, they need the cold to run the machines there, you see. Yes, yeah, I thought as much. Um, not being there myself, but I know a little bit about factories and oil mining, being from London, as you yes. sure you would know. There's a lot of, of industrial uh, progression happening there. Yes, yeah, a lot of smog. Mm. <laughs> Don't I know it. I uh, assume then that it would be safe to say that you uh, you keep out of um, Cornwall's business when it comes to the oil trade. You are a, a product of his grand machine. Yes, I would say so. Yes, if, if old Reginald stops delivering the coal, the machine stop running, let's just say. That and makes sense. Are you satisfied with the amount of coal you're able to deliver? Or would you like to deliver more? Well, to be honest, I have been spreading the word recently. I've got a couple of fellows that have been looking for me, and I've been, sadly missed them. But uh, the more people I inform about the cold deliveries, the thing is, you know, people are very money focused around here. You know, they're not looking for they're looking for the easy way out, as one would say. You know, they, what's the most profit they can make in the smallest amount of time? You know, I'm looking for fellows that are looking for good, honest work. You know, you come to me, you pay me sixty dollars, I give you the coal, you take the sample to Annisburg, you deliver it back to my old refinery, you get a nice forty dollar profit. You know, yes, very easy, easy work. Yep, just sit on their wagon yes. and drive it. Yeah. Well, what exactly, if? What if? Exactly. Don't have um, to worry about getting robbed down the mine and such. Yes. Well, what if we could help you there? Perhaps even uh, arrange uh, a whole caravan of drivers from time to time. Get this oh, call. Yes, that would be good. Now, but do you think that Cornwall would accept it? Is uh, perhaps uh, he's uh, sitting high and mighty, and he's. Uh, Throne built of gold somewhere, and uh, he's satisfied with what uh, is going on now. Or do you think he wants more, or would he need to be persuaded? No, Ooh. I think he'd be very interested in more. I, I could easily organize, probably, I don't know, uh, let me do a little bit of math in my head here. 8 to 16. I could probably do, uh, I could probably get enough gold to do 16 trips twice a week, you know, or, you know, four times of eight or whatever. See, the way we see it, Mr. Candy Kane, is that uh, Cornwall has a monopoly on the oil here in the crossing. He yeah. has a steady flow, excuse the pun, of um, oil to be distributed across many sources, both lanterns, machinery, and of course gun oil in the gunsmiths. Mm -hmm. Seems to me like he's already established himself a a flow in which uh, he can get the coal he needs in the timely manner that he would like it. But uh, it would seem to us that uh, if a man like you wanted to 
profit highly from uh, the masses amounts of coal it might take uh, a change a big change in his operation to need him to order more than the regular amount per week for example yes sir. and um i assume the factories can they can only go as fast as they can and they can only supply at the current rate of demand there's no need for them to fire up the furnaces if uh, they're already making the right amounts of, of oil. Yes, true, yes. Unless there was some sort of shortage of oil or something, they probably need even more coal. Hmm, yeah, there's a point. That's a good we idea. I never really thought of that, but, uh, yeah. Hmm. I wonder, Mr. Candy Cane, uh, a shortage in oil it would um, increase demand am i right i'm not no. one for huge business but you seem to be a man that knows his way of around course that. of course you know gun oil especially is one of the most used commodities in the crossing itself you know like i see many people even just before i met you fellows uh five uh, four fellows and a lady came into your store and purchased some gun oil and they were all shining up their weapons uh in the yes. store here and you know that the, the problem right now is the gun oil is so cheap, you know, the profit margins are so small, you know? Exactly, there yeah, is no profit. The, that's what the problem is. He has this monopoly and he will not let go. It uh, He distributes equally to all the gun shops and well, somehow we cannot charge any profit for it. See, a man like uh, Mr. Cormo, Candy Cane, he's uh, very influential in a lot of industries and that attracts the attention of the government of course uh, i would hazard a guess that perhaps his influence of the government has meant he can set a price across the catalogs of all gun stores for gun oil and supply the masses of demand that the crossing has yes he's monopolized the market he has mm. well how well do you know this factory? Uh, do you know oh, all the ins and outs? I know everything about it. I know the, about it. Handle the pressure. How to keep the machines running. What needs to go where and when. Would it be you too much? Some dangerous work in the factory. Hmm. Not too dangerous, you know. You wouldn't want to be firing a gun or lighting match anywhere near the oil fields, of course. But to be honest, with after a few hours of training, I'd say most people have it down. The people that are working there right now want the smartest tools in the shed, you know what I mean? Interesting. Mm, interesting. Uh, would you uh, be able to maybe give us a tour of the facility? And we can talk more. Yes, of course. Do you have time now, or...? Yes, yes, plenty of time. Oh, very good. Well, how about this? Uh, uh, Freddy, maybe you would like to go get a wagon? We can escort uh, Mr. Candy Cane down there. Yeah, perhaps um, a few more of our associates or just us. Um, I don't know if, yeah. you like. yes, if uh, Yuri, if uh, McMuffin is, is not aware of this situation yet, but uh, if they like to come, sure. Perhaps Yuri might be good for now, just the three of us. We okay. do want to ensure that Mr. Candy Cane is safe. The crossing, as he's already experienced, can be harsh. Yes, yes, of course. Yes, definitely. All right. Yeah, I'll wait here with uh, Mr. Kadekin, and uh, if you could bring a wagon by, it'd be much appreciated. Yeah, of course. I'll, uh, I'll arrange it now. Yes, yeah. Well, I think uh, I have a good idea of the type of uh, businessman you are, and, um, Yes, I'm just going to have a cigar, if that's okay, old chap. Yes, help yourself. Can you uh, feel free to try and... Um, there's one over there, I believe, in a little cedar box. Oh, yes, I see, yeah. I'm not too fond of cigars myself. I prefer uh, opium, opium tobacco. Uh, I've, sure, began... I've never tried opium tobacco. I'm, oh. I've always been on the cigars and cognac myself. I see, I see. Yes, it's... Uh... I can say that I am the first uh, opium distributor at the crossing. I've been doing it for about uh, one and a half years so far. Oh, uh, wow. Yes, it's um, 
That's a very delicate uh, product, not very strong. Just enough to smooth out the edges, as it were. Oh, like a light buzz. Yes, yes. Uh, do you uh, enjoy the pipe, Mr. Candy Cane? You know, I used to smoke a pipe religiously, but uh, the tar build up and the cleaning constantly. I've just kind of moved on to cigars, you know? Yeah, I see. I see. Well, I have two forms. One, of course, is a cigarette. The other is uh, I prefer the pipe. Um, I have these pipes. In oh, damn it. I dropped it. Shit. Oh, God. <laughs> Clumsy me. Uh, what happens to the rest of us, old boy? Yes, of course. Well, the uh, if you would like to try one day, of course, I can arrange for you to have a very nice pipe and uh, give you some samples for free if you like. Oh, thank you. Yes, of course. Let's so what, uh, go what do you want to see on this tour of the factory? Well, let's go downstairs, wait out by the front door, and then uh, um, okay, so we yes, can get no, on the wagon. Lead the way. I'll tell you on the way. So, yes, I guess I am interested. As long as his guards don't uh, interfere, Cromwell's guards, that is. Yes, I do like to. You know, I wouldn't uh, brandish a weapon too close to them. They are a little bit trigger happy, but you know that's when I whip out the old hammer and give them a little whack, and let them know who's yes. in charge. Okay, all right, good to know. I've noticed a few in the last few days. But uh, of course we'd like to know where and how the gun oil is stored. Uh, just understand the process. Uh, yes. I know that the oil comes from the ground uh, up. But from there... The yes. Units. Yes, but from there I... Little confused how it all works. Yes, I'm sorry, don't worry. Oh, excuse me, lady. Yeah, right here is good to wait. These two of your friends? Uh, yeah, well, that's one Phoenix, yep. Hello, Phoenix. Hello. Howdy. How is McMuffin? Oh, great. He, uh, he went out for a walk. And I think you should leave him alone for a minute, you know. And forcing him to talk isn't... I don't yeah. think that it would be good for him right now. Yeah, he seems grumpy, which I can understand why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a big uh, Just... shock. But you know, I'm so how are you? You know, I do think though that uh, he should not give up hope. It's very possible that he can get uh, refine the use of his arm again through proper exercise and. Uh, Perhaps even Chinese medicine. All right, here we go. Yeah, sure. Oh, wonderful! I can. It takes time, yes. like you told me. It takes time. Yes. Okay. Here you go, Mister Candy Cane. If you don't mind. Oh, thank you. I'll hop in. Make sure you're friendly. No, oh, always, always feeling friendly. <laughs> Yuri, can you uh, come with us, perhaps? We want to ensure that Mister Candy Cane is kept comfortable and safe. Uh, sure. I hope Mr. Candy King, you don't mind that I sit in there. Oh, no problem at all, ma'am. Help yourself. Phoenix, we'll be back shortly. We won't be gone long. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. You know the way, gentlemen, yes? Yes, we do. Yep. You know, I used to run a lot of coal myself back in the day. It's good money. Uh, the hardest, of course, is digging it up, which is uh, what you... Uh, do you have other employees that help you with the coal mining itself? Yes, a little bit, you know. Sometimes I'll support people at the mines and I'll offer them money, you know, for the coal or the cheap offer, you know. I've thought about uh, maybe organizing a little thing kind of like you do, where uh, I take a few people down to the coal mine, specifically the one up behind uh, Strawberry. I'm not sure if you know of it. Yes, 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 yes. That is the place I used to go. Uh, go ahead, sorry. Um, yeah, that is the place I used to go, uh, the coal mine. All yes, you get so is I, coal uh, and gems. Yes, all you get is coal and gems, exactly, and that's what I want. Coal, coal, <coughs> coal. I try to keep a surplus, you know, of around, uh, what, well, how much is that, 80, 100, so 320 coal I usually keep on me at a time. At the moment I'm running a little low, I've only got 180 coal, but 
I mean, okay. I'll be going out probably tomorrow to top my uh, stock back up again. That's a lot of work for a man of your uh, age. Yes, but I you don't You must be very fit. Enjoy it, you know? Very good. I hope I'm as uh, spry as you when I reach your age. Yes, 65 years old I am. Oh, wow, say, that is amazing. Yeah, I have yes. a little ways to go to get there. Yes, I think it's the cognac keeping me alive, to be honest. <laughs> oh, for sure, yes, good cognac from, where is the cognac from? England. <laughs> you know, in this coal mine long ago, I met a lady there. She was uh, uh, a lady who liked to study the earth, the rocks. Uh, what do they call these people? You're a geologist, my boy. There you go. Yes, 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 yes. She was preparing uh, for a trip to Guarma when uh, this is before, long before the uh, the route even opened up. Uh, but she was uh, interested only in the rupees. And you know what she did with the coal? What? She took it into a corner and dumped it out. She would be in there for Aye. days and nights and days and nights and uh, would only save the rubies and she would dump the coal in the corner and let it uh, to rot. Oh my god. Yeah, I heartbreaking. Like now where I can just give it to me. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. I told her, you know, you your expedition must require funds. Uh, it would be a good way just to sell your coal uh, to someone cheaply uh, get something back anyway. She ended up uh, giving me like a uh, 60 coal, which I was grateful for. Very strange lady, indeed. Yes, yeah, she sounds it. Anyone that would throw precious coal away, you know, it's the yeah. nectar of the gods. <laughs> and it uh, is the backbone of modern society. Yes, exactly. How could the train? We... Yes, how could the train run without coal? How could these great machines exactly. at the oil refinery where we are heading now, how could they run without it? Yes. So it's a miracle. Yes, to find such a precious thing in the ground of all places. Yes. What will be next trains running on worms? <laughs> now that would be something. So how long have you... I my factory already. Ah, yes. It's a nice smell. How long have you been here in the crossing, Mr. Candy Cane? Oh, about two months, I'd say. Okay. So by now you know your way around, you know a little bit of the politic situation of the crossing. Oh, yes, I know many of the different businessmen trying to approach me. And, you know, I met a fellow earlier today, I uh, can't remember his name, but he... He wanted me to give him four hundred dollars towards someone else's horse to meet for a business proposition. I said, "My boy, if I meet for this business proposition and I think it's worth my money, then I'll give you four hundred dollars for a horse, not before." <laughs> Wait, he wanted you just you... to give over four hundred dollars to a stranger to help buy a horse. Yes, and then he would send me a letter later, and we'd meet up and have a business proposition. I said, I'm, "You know, you don't become a rich man like me by being an idiot, young boy." Yes, no doubt. I've been seeing those dirty homeless hobos all over the city lately, and they've disgusted me. Uh, I agree. I think they, uh, they started in Valentine, I believe. A large group of them. Roaming hobos, perhaps. Yes, I'm not a fan of homeless. No, this I'm a is a... Uh... in the, you know, get, get to work kind of thing, you know? Yes. It's not expensive around here. Exactly. There, you know, I met a deputy yesterday. Who talked about the American dream? Everyone gets a good chance to work and to make a dollar and to make a better life for themselves. Exactly. Such people like these, they spit on the American dream. Yes, exactly. And you know, I've seen them going around Valentine begging people for dollars. I don't understand why people don't give them a good old backhand and tell them to, you know, get down to the goddamn mines and sales and make a little bit of money. Oh, is that a card? I believe so. Are these, Candy Cane, uh, would you uh, perhaps like to speak to this gentleman yes, yes, out yes, the window? Course. Hold on. Oh, oh, get... oh, it's Gary. Hello, Gary. Gary, this gentleman with me. Do not worry. Um, I'm just 
just giving them a nice tour of the factory. You want to die? Uh oh, oh. Put that gun down. Eight I mean, Jesus Christ. Sorry about that, fellows. Gary's a little bit trigger on me. No, nope, okay, it's all right. Sir, sir. Do you need a bandage? No, no, I'm fine. All right. Perhaps we can stay in the wagon for now. Sorry about Gary there. He's a goddamn idiot. Yeah. Perhaps he wasn't paid by Mr. Cornwall. Another one, go. Right side. Right side. Oh, God, I'll take care of it. Got him. Ayya. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. Take it nice and slow. Go, oh, you can keep a look at it. No, I'm on my own. They don't normally do this to me. <laughs> no, I understand. They're just trying to do their job. Yeah, we're not doing it very well. It looks quiet now. Yes, it shouldn't be anyone up ahead. Usually just at the entrance here, the, you know, the guard the entrance. Sometimes there's someone patrolling the main floor, but not very often. Okay. Yes, if you want to park up off the back, I'll give you the grand tour. Just watch this guard and his gun. Oh, another one. Is. Don't worry, fellas. I'll take care of him. Okay. They seem to have got the message. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pretty skilled with that hammer of yours. Yeah, thank you. My weapon of choice, of course. <laughs> yes, yeah, very so, uh, good. Where would you like to begin the tour? Well, uh, you're the boss. Uh, what? Uh, maybe start from the beginning. Uh, how does the oil come in? Where it goes, etc. Okay, so obviously you've done coal deliveries before yourself, so the coal that comes in here and we stack it in these barrels here, these are excess coal barrels. Over okay. here in this uh, these large machineries here, this is where we store uh, the coal for the steam, you know, that pumps the machines inside, so this is where the coal ah. can go. So this these is like, like large furnaces. A furnace, okay, got it. Yes, you can climb on top here, I'll show you. Careful, first step's a doozy. Yes. Ah, These are like yes. pressure valves, you know, to keep the, the machines running inside. So, so all of the many, uh, oil. Go ahead, sorry. All of the energy to move these machines. It, is this where it comes from, right here? Yes, one of the places. Yes. Okay. Oh, look at this. I'm not going. I, yeah, I'm going to follow Mr. Candy Cane here. Okay, what is this you say? The smoker. So it's smoker. used to store some uh, special types of oil in this large tanker here, you see? So we, what we do is we put oil in the bottom of that tanker there, and we put wood chips in here, and we smoke out the oil. What it does oh. is it expands the amount of oil in there. You see that first line at the bottom? Yes. The smoker there, and the pressure will take it up to that second line right at the top, and then we empty oh. it out. Okay, I see. Yes. And, and we, so this, uh, this oil is... Assumed, uh, yeah. I was just going to say, we assumed that uh, perhaps there was different processes in regards to the types of oil needed. Uh, yes, yes. Exactly. Lanterns, gun oil, machine oil. I assume there's mm. slightly different processes and machines. Yes, I think this is the I think this is the lamp oil here, this one, because it's it's kind of more flammable and lasts mm. a little bit longer. That makes sense. Ah, I see. Yeah, let's go this way. I'll take you in the front of the building and I'll show you around the building. Then I'll show you around the landscape here because we've got a couple of you know diggers going deep into the ground and suck out the oil and such. I don't suppose uh, I'd be right in assuming the four large pyramid type towers, they are pumping oil from the ground, are they? Yes, yes, exactly. Hmm. We did see a large pipe connecting it to the main factory here. Yes, oh, I'll walk you along the pipe and show you that in a bit. Uh, so this oh, is the carousel, this is uh, one of the ingredients for the oil for uh, the guns, I think, yes, for the gun oil. Oh. We store it in here and then the pipes they follow through and it gets mixed ah. inside. 
Yeah, so this, so this is more like Kerosene the crude storage. Oil. Ah, I see. It's okay. a, it's an ingredient in the gun oil, I believe. Yeah, it's one of the uh, ingredients of the gun oil. It, it kind of gives it that smooth, glossy uh, finish, you know. I see. You know the way it looks quite black in the bottle, but once you rub it on the gun, it kind of looks smooth and clear. That I think that's the kerosene. Yeah. Mm, okay. Interesting. So, but, but yes. this product, this product alone, is not good for gun oil, right? It has to be. Refine no, no, still. you'll need the oil from the ground as well, yes. Okay, got it. And inside here is the factory itself. We'll start off from the furnace room down here. Careful for the dripping. This is the furnace room, you know. Where we pump the curl in to keep the machines indoors running nice and smoothly. Okay. Wouldn't get so, too close, it's quite hot. Yes, I can feel it from here. So the furnace is out yes. there out there. Uh, are they connected to this furnace too? Or No, no, no. The furnace is out there connected to the machines upstairs, and this furnace in here kind of runs the machines down here and ah. outside around the back of this furnace. I'll show okay. you. Okay, okay, I see. I understand. Yes. There's normally a fellow here, I can't remember his name. I think it's Mark or Kark or something like that. He he does the cold checking, you know, whenever it gets delivered outside and comes in here, he adds up all the numbers, makes sure the boxes are stacked nice and neatly. Okay, all right. So here we have the machines pumping these, uh, uh, purifying the oil, you know, steaming it and getting rid of any of the imperfections, you know, then you know, you're pumping oil out of the ground, you're getting things like grass and dirt and stones and such. What this machine does is it basically filters them things through. Pressure pushes through only the oil and water and then the heat evaporates the steam. That's the steam you're seeing there come out of that little spinner up there. That, was, that steam is the impurity, yes? Yes, yeah, so basically the machine here, you see it pumping? Yes. What's that doing is it's pushing the oil through a filter. And that's, store, that's getting rid of all the, the rocks and dirt and grass and such. And, okay. and then this is with the evaporated water, you see. We're only heating it up enough. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you know much about oil, but oil no. doesn't uh, boil as easy as water itself. So the water gets evaporated out and all you're left with is pure oil. I see. Okay. Very ingenious. And these are delivery valves, you know. The, the machine itself runs underground here. And it comes back up through these pipes, and this is where you plug in the, you know, the barrels of the machinery you wish to fill up with oil and such. Oh, okay. So like the uh, cart or the train will come up yeah, here. Yes, exactly. These large barrels, you you wheel the barrels up here, and you turn the valves, and then the ah, oil comes out. Okay, I see. I yes. see. And that oil over there that you were seeing, that that's like the main oil, you know, for like trains and guns and such. Okay. And this is more like in specific oils. These barrels up here, I think they're for lanterns. Oh, oh, these ones here are for a lantern. Okay. Yes. And then all these uh, machines you see here on the walls, these are just extra storage, you know, for uh, excess oil before pickup. Mm, okay. That makes sense. Oh, oh so the lantern upstairs, lantern the... oil is here? Yes, this is the lantern oil. This uh, this machine right here. See, this one pumping quite fast. Yes. This one is specifically for the lantern oils. That one okay. over there is more for your, you know, your uh, guns and your uh, trains and such. Ah. Uh. And, uh, did you say that these vats here are for storing the gun oil and yes, across the way is for lanterns? Yes, uh -huh. it's, this is the oil before it's refined and mixed with the correct uh, materials, you know, it's like a pure oil, a crude oil, I think some people would call it. So, so this oil here, over here, this is finished product, is that correct? Yes, that's finished product, yes. Okay. The same here, too. Just, um... Yes, yes, yes. It's all that surplus. is for lantern. Behind me is for gun. Okay. No, other way around. Other, other way, way around? around? Oh, I think, okay. I believe so. Yes, yes, yes. And then we've got more upstairs here. My office is up here. We've got a surplus of uh, storage here, you know. We've got many barrels that we're waiting to sell and transport all across the country. Yeah, this is a huge enterprise. Yes. This is what we call the looker pot. This is where you can look into the oil, make sure you know nothing you know, imperfections float to the top, you see, so you can make sure that you know no dirt or grass or anything, and if it has we can scoop it out of there. And behind me here we have the main pressure information. So all these dials here, as long as they're not in the red, everything's okay and dandy. 
But these go red, the alarms go off in the building, and it's get the hell out of here while you can. Ah, uh, okay. All these valves here are connected to different parts of the factory, you know, that uh, let the people know up here that uh, everything's running nice and smoothly. If any one of these turns red, we need to turn the valves, turn the pressure off, shut down the, the factory and evacuate everyone and make sure everything's okay. It could be a blockage in the line or, you know, a hole somewhere that we need to find. I see, I see. Okay. Interesting. In here we have some excerpt machinery. These are uh, backup uh, oil refinery, uh, you know, purification machines that are unused at the moment, but we are looking to put them online soon. Ah. This is a backup furnace as well, in case the one downstairs stops working. Okay. And then this is my office, just in here. Welcome. Ah, oh, very nice office. Thank you. Well, that yeah, is the most enlightening. Somebody sent me a letter. Interesting. I'll have to send them one back. Oh. They haven't left a name, though. Just Shit. apologize for missing me. Is it okay if I smoke you? Yes, of course, of course. Uh, you know, as long as you don't uh, light a match on the oil field itself or drop an ember or fire a gun, everything's fine, you know. In here, pretty much everything is, uh, you know, sealed up nice and tight. Oh, okay, good, good. We don't suggest for the workers, you know, if they are planning to have a cigarette, maybe take it off property or... You know, not light up near the machinery. The last thing we need is an explosion here, you know? Oh, yes. Well, you know, God forbid there was ever such an accident. But if yes, if exactly. if there was such an accident, uh, what area would be uh, would hinder work the most for the longest time? Oh, I'd say it would probably be the oil field out there with the large pump. If that large pump turned off, you're talking thousands and thousands of dollars a day lost. Hmm. And, but they have four pumps, so if one is gone, then... Yes, but that's the main pump out there. I'll, I'll show you. Come on, I'll show you the rest of the okay. tour. Okay. Come out the back door. It's a nice, nice way out. You can get on the roof of this building as well, gentlemen, if you'd like to see up there. Mr. Carney Kane, I assume uh, you would know, is, uh, is coal used in the manufacturing of steel and iron? Yes, 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 of course. Hmm. So, uh, repair works, I assume, would mean, uh, Quite a lot of business for you, in fact. Oh, yes. And if no smoking. About that, yes, they would need a lot of coal to get here to fix the machinery and such. Mm. I know uh, they're building some new housing for the workers out there because they've been living in tents quite recently. Ah. Uh. And they've oh, built the railway line right through here to, you know, help uh, get delivery service nice and quick. So what are these huge tanks right here to our left? The storage, my boy. This is a pure oil, like, good to go. Yes, that's from, that's directly from the ground before it gets purified, so that's unusable oh, okay. oil right now. Okay, okay. You know okay. the way I showed you inside those barrels downstairs towards the, the staircase? Yes, so that's yes. the completed oil, but that there is the stuff straight from the ground itself. Okay. Highly flammable. I see. Highly flammable. Oh, shit, I'm smoking. Michael. Yeah, maybe stop. Yeah, I'm going to put it out here. Yeah, just one more puff. What harm could that do? Go. Yes. Put it away. I'm trying. I think this well over here might have run dry. There we go. Ah. Uh, Unfortunately. Uh, no, I do not. Uh, sorry. When you live in the city, you kind of forget about these things. Yes, indeed. Yes, from what I remember, the last time I was told here, uh, this machine was out of order. Stopped oh. Ah. Okay. Yes. This one is all dried up. Okay. This was, uh, yeah, one of their first pumps then, before it was either damaged or dried up. I use these barrels over here as a shooting range. <laughs> oh my god. I hope there's nothing in them. Oh, there is, boy. There's useless oil. That's what we, this is where we stack the stuff that's not good for sailing, you know? It's, uh, <laughs> it lets you I know see. where you're shot at, you know, because it leaks out. I'll show you. <laughs> Come and have a look, my boy. It's a nice piece you got there, sir. What is that? You see? 
It's a nice piece you got there, sir. What a what is that you're holding? Oh, it's just a cheap double action that I throw away every other day, you know. I've, <laughs> I've got my golden double action in the bank there for special occasions. Oh, very nice. I can imagine. Yes, yeah, just in here we've got uh, some of the machinery that runs the pipes into the ground. We come inside and have a look. Without a lantern, there it's going to be hard to see. Oh, another machine, just like the ones inside. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so this one runs the, you know, the pipe system in the actual the uh, pipe going into the ground there. So ah. it pumps it up and down and until the water, you know, it hits so. the, the oil line and then the pressure of the, the pipe going into the oil it, it has to escape somewhere. So it goes up the pipe. And these two here are full with water and uh, they're for, you know, keeping the pressure and the heat of the pipe itself down. Because the last thing you want is that pipe to, you know, melt away or warp, and then you have an yes, awful difficulty yes. getting it out of the ground. And Wouldn't did you say this? Sorry, that this was um, this was their main pump. This one here, or is it another one? Oh, it's over here. Oh, keep moving just ahead. See. Ah, yes, with the light on. Yes, that's the main pump right there ahead of us. Okay. So, but wouldn't and the it one on be? The left is the secondary pump, is it? Yes. Wouldn't it be easier to uh, replace pipes if, let's say, there was an accident here? It would be quite easy to maybe replace the pumps and maybe build a new uh, oil rig, or am I just... Well, I wouldn't say it would be too easy, old boy. It depends on what kind of damage was done. You're talking about an explosion or a fire that could be weeks before it get online. You know, okay. Earlier on, you asked me that theoretical question about the most damage done. This oil field here is a matchbox waiting to spark, you know? This field lit on fire, you're talking thousands and thousands of dollars of damage. Interesting. Franklin, hello, Franklin. Working hard, I see. Okay, so you'll see the machine in here is <laughs> pumping away, you know? Oil's uh, going down into the yeah. So it. this would be uh, pump number one, is it? Yeah, this is the main pump here, yeah. Right inside the pump right now, okay. Yes, this is it. So th this is where Mr. C uh, Cromwell gets, uh, well, most of his uh, money for the oil. This yes, is where it all is, begins, uh, right here. This will be his big money maker, yes. The coal that I supply him for my deliveries is what runs these machines right here. Okay. Oh. Oh, don't what the fuck? Fall. Yeah, don't fall. Yeah, I fell. You okay there, my boy? Yeah, oh, I don't want to go up this way. Come, come back down, you might be able to jump up here. Okay. Where I am. There, there we go. go. This, uh, this is it here, is it not, Mr. Yes, that's it. Going right. You see the way it's wobbling there? That means it's sucking up oil right now. Mm. What? This little pipe here. This is what goes yep, into the this ground. This is bringing it up. Like a big straw. Yes, so what it does is, you see the way it's pumping up and down there? What it does is it breaks uh, yes. into the oil line and then... The pressure of it underground, it's, the, the oxygen, the, the air that gets in there, it pumps it right up into that uh, into that uh -oh. pipe there, it sucks it down into the machine. I see. It's, uh, it's okay. quite safe. It's quite safe. I see, and this big hammer thing, this is what moves it up and down. Yes, it's the pressure of, uh, you know, the, the coal is heating up water and that's creating steam and the steam is pushing the hammer up and down. I see, okay. Uh, it looks like we've got company. Oh. Yeah. Who's that? Not sure. Hello there. Are you sure to share the apartment? Yeah. Sure. Everything you read here? Yes. Just giving yeah. these fellows a tour. Okay, Very, I see. Uh, there has been a telegram uh, that something was going on here. Oh. Have you... No, don't really know. Do you, did you see anything or hear anything? Mm, yeah, I, I was giving no. these gentlemen a tour of the factory, and then I took them over there to the gun range, and then I mm -hmm. took them over here to uh, show them the new pipes. Uh, Mr. Gunny Gang, um, perhaps the uh, the gentleman at the front gate uh, caused a little bit of. Oh, oh yes, they did try to attack. Yes, so they tried to attack us when we got here. Yeah. yeah. One of the locals. Yes. The local Two. guards, Two yeah, locals. Mr. Candy Cane is, uh, 
is obviously a regular here, but they got a bit startled with us. Uh, because I was in the, the back wagon. of the wagon, you see, so they didn't see me. And okay, oh, so it's it's your wagon, okay. Uh, how long have you been already here for? I'm sure, 20, 20 minutes maybe? Half an hour, yeah, yeah, yeah. 20 to half 20, an hour, yeah. yeah. Eric, you haven't seen anything here, right? No, nothing other than that. Uh, we've been okay. alone. You know, you're the first person we've seen that haven't been us. Okay. okay. There's somebody uh, up there. Appreciate that. Thank you. Is that Wait, your uh, fellow deputies? Where? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of them. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Cromwell must uh, maybe uh, has a special deal with the sheriff's Cornwall. department. Cornwall. Oh. Cornwall. 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 Is that well, Mr. Cornwall? I appreciate Cornwall? for the information. You, yeah, you have a good day, all right? Yes, have okay. a great day. Howdy. Calm down, Freddy. It's okay. Hey, I have a question Ooh. out of blue for you. Do you know a man named Huxley Palmer? Yes, yes I... Supposedly I met him before, right? But I don't remember his name at all, so maybe he didn't tell me his name. But he's been sending me letters over the last couple of days saying he wanted to do cold deliveries. But whenever I send him a letter telling him to meet me, he's never around. And then he sends me a letter the next day and he says, Oh, sorry, I missed you. I'm like, okay, well, tell me a time to meet you. And then he sends me another letter with no time on it. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I think he's just a fellow that wants to do cold deliveries to make a bit of money. Okay. All right. The so you... uh, response time for uh, deputies. <laughs> you see what I mean now about influence with the government, Mr. Gurney Kane? Yes. Thankfully, they didn't ask to see my hammer. <laughs> if someone was yeah. shot in Saint Denis, it might take them a, half a day to get there. Yeah, oh, Cornwall yes, has his like... fingers in a lot of people's pockets. Yeah, sounds about right. Yes. Well, you did want to have a walk of the of the main pipe, didn't you? I'll show you that. That's true. Come yes, this way. yes. All right. I hope you have your climbing shoes on, fellows. Always, always, always prepared. Interesting. I wonder if it was the guards, one of the guards who alerted the law. Possibly. Must have been. Can the guards do that? Is that who alerted them? Or do you think so? I don't know. Saw Maybe a passerby saw something happening and they said, Oh my god, someone has just been hurt. Yes, or uh, somebody might have heard the gunshots when I was practicing my weapon. Yeah, that, yeah maybe that too. But that would be even more fast though. Yes. So here we have another one of our main pipes, you know, we have to connect it there to the newest uh, drill that's being built. That one over there is pumping away, you see it? Uh, wait, which one? That's over pipe here. Oh, two, yes, that okay. Over there, yes. Okay, so that's number two. It's going to get connected two. to this pipe and it's going to lead right to the crude oil. So if you come up here and walk with me, be very careful here. Oh, boy. Don't worry, son. I've been doing this for a long time now. It's nice <laughs> to see. All right. If you can do it, then I can do it. Yes, if a 65-year-old man can do it, you can do it, young boy. Yeah, you were this about to... Just be careful here not to slip. Okay. Smooth sailing oh. from here on. Sounds like someone's yelling. So this pipe right now, this is connected uh, to pump the button, yes? Yes, this is connected to pump one, and it'll soon be connected to pump two as well. So okay. We'll double the oil coming in, and I think uh, the, mining, you know, the oil manufacturing is going to have to increase, you know, because you know, we, we can only feel these so much, we, you'll see already, we've had to have two extensions here. Yes. You know, this, this is originally one pump, one, one gallon, and now two gallons, three gallons, and then we've had to extend it into two smaller pumps right there. Oh. If you want to get down, by the way, fellow, it's just here. Just take your time, fall on this. And okay. Here, oh my god, it's pretty high. No, you got it. T take yeah. your time. Okay. There you go. Oh, I think there's a guard who's uh, upset, it seems. Where? Uh, that, that way, somewhere. Yo, is that a guard, or is that a, one of your fellow? Um... That... That is a guard. Yeah. I've never seen one stand there before. Maybe this is trouble. 
Hello, fellow. I think he's fine. Okay. He looks like a soldier. Put the gun away, son. Good. Damn it. You just can't get the staff nowadays. Uh, overzealous in their work, maybe. Yes. Um, should we go pick up the other? Oh, they're, they're up there. They don't have to get down oh. safely. Hold on. Oh, oh. Job. There you go. Yep. Same again. Careful, Yuri. You got this. There you go. Good, Good job. job. Good job. Good job. Oh, yeah. Good job. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, that was the factory. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Very much. Was, so. uh, Very much. Pretty so. marvelous. Thank you. No problem. No. Back to Saint Denis, is it? Yes, uh, before we go, though, um, a, a couple of things. Uh, this Mr. Huxley Palmer, uh, do you. You don't know him well enough to trust him or not, do you? No, I do not. I do, I do not trust him enough, no. I, I don't even know how long I spoke to him in person, you know? Everyone I meet, I discuss my cool delivery business, so it could be anyone. Would you, um... Well, okay, let me... I'll, I'll lay it out in broad stroke here. We're looking for a way, of course, to increase your revenue with coal. But also, of course, looking for a way that we can break this monopoly on gun oil. Uh, I believe yes. that this Huxley Palmer might be of some use, but I do not know him. I was wondering if you might make a little effort to get to know him, see what kind of man he is. It may be someone you yes, can take under yes. your umbrella, too. Yes, yes, definitely. I'm a bear scouse. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, yes, he's a um, dark-haired man with a big mustache, uh, twirly. He likes to twirl it. He's a very um, confident-sounding man. I don't think he's um, a normal civilian. He might uh, enjoy the more dangerous side of life from time to time. Uh, yes. But um, if um, next we meet, perhaps I can tell you more about what we are thinking, uh, if you're interested. But I believe that you could stand to make a substantial profit uh, from it all. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely interested, chaps. Definitely interested. You, um, when is it you're next doing um, one of your mining uh, exhibitions down, down west? Yeah, it should be today, but I don't think it's going to happen. I would say Tuesday. Oh, another guard. Okay. Oh, I would God, say tu Tuesday. I go. I got a backhead. Oh my god, look at this. You, you are amazing. What What do you eat every day? Coal. <laughs> amazing, amazing. I only hope that I can be as strong as you when I'm 65. Yes. He's gone off. <laughs> oh no. Where? Uh, I think he's down now. Yeah, I think he's. Nice yeah, I think he's... There we go. Yeah. Uh, perfect. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Time for us to leave, gentlemen. Yes, I think so. Would you like to trip back to the city or? Yes, please. Okay. Mr. Kadikin, what what time of day are you usually around uh, uh, working? Mm, quite often, old boy. I'd say every single day, to be honest. Uh, it's rare that I'm not around, and normally it would be about earliest nine, actually earliest ten hours before now, I'd say, and latest would be about probably six or, six or eight hours from now. Okay. Oh, very good. Very good. All right, that's yes, perfect. I'm, a, I'm around a lot, and I mean a lot, a lot. Okay. Good, good, good. Good to know. Uh, for me, weekends, I'm around a lot. Uh, the weekdays usually, oh, let's say two hour or three hour from now until late in the evening. That is when I'm usually around. Yes. Of course, there are going to be days where, you know, I'm not around at all, but normally I like to let my close friends know that, you know, send them a couple of, of letters saying I'm not going to be around that day or whatnot. Of course, of course. Well, I think uh, 
there is potential for some very good business uh, between us, as long as uh, uh, Mr. Candy Cane. Uh, I know you don't know, we don't even know everything that we are, are thinking about how to do it yet. But um, please uh, keep all of this very quiet. Keep it under your hat for now. Oh, yes, would... I'm, I'm the kind of fellow, sir, that will not mention anything like this unless I'm told. All right. Good you know what know. they say? Loose lips sink ships. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Um, and then this uh, Mr. Huxley Palmer, if you uh, find the time to uh, get to know him a little bit, see if he's someone that uh, you might be able to use in some way. Uh, for what? I don't know yet. But. Uh... Yes, he definitely seems interested in doing cold deliveries. He sent me two different letters about it, but I haven't managed to spot him, you know? Okay. And then, of course, also, um, if you have a huge surplus of coal and you really need some help, uh, reach out uh, to me or to Freddy here or to your ear, uh, anyone in Taipan. But I think us three are around quite a bit. Um, and we can yes. arrange, uh, hopefully, we can help you arrange a whole caravan of people to help you. Yes, like I said, I sell the coal at $60 a piece, uh, you know, and it's $60 for 20 and then you'll make a nice $40 profit, you know. Like, yes, yes. If I was to sell you, uh, how much would that be, 200 coal, you know, $60 for me, 400 for you. Okay. Yes, uh, that is something we can assist you with, uh, uh, given that Mr. Cornwall will uh, accept all of the coal deliveries. You'll, you'll definitely accept them, you know. You never have enough coal. Well, especially after they get that second pump up and running. Then I assume he yes, would... Yes, definitely. Yeah, double the amount of coal, I would assume. Yes, and, you know, he'll definitely be looking to expand, I'd assume, as well. You know, buy more land, eventually maybe even take over Valentine itself. Oh, my. That's all the world needs is Mr. Cornwall owning more and more. Yes. If only I had enough money, old chaps, I'd buy it myself. <laughs> well, well, perhaps uh, fortune might gift you that ability. Well, oh, hopefully. Be a dream come true to be an oil baron. Well, stick with us. Don't speak of this to anyone. And, uh, man man lai, slowly we can develop a plan that will fill all our pockets. Well, yes, that's fabulous. Do you know much about a Mr. Moon down in Armadillo? Yes, I do. I know him quite well, actually. Yes, I, I met a fellow in all white, in southern draw, earlier today. Ah, I don't remember his name. Austin. Mr. I Austin so something. Is. Yes, uh, something Austin or some or Austin. Lucky uh, something Austin. Something? Yeah, that's it. Lucky Austin, that's it. You're right. All white, yes, white you, horse, you know everything. Do you, do you trust that man? No, I do not trust him. Um... Mr. Yes, Austin. that is the man that wanted me to give him the five hundred dollars. Ah, uh, yeah, I do not trust this man. He runs around the yes, mine. I don't know if I trust him either. He says strange things like, like, oh yes, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be telling people that, Mr. Uh, Candy Cane, and he just sounds a bit suspicious, you know. Yes, yes, I agree. And he runs around the mine. He does a little bit of work, like ten minutes, and then he'll run around the mine asking for gems. Yes, yes, I, I, that is exactly it. You know, later on, he wanted to set up a meeting with me with someone down uh, down near o New Austin, and he asked me if I knew any Spanish. Do you know why he would be asking that? Spanish. Hmm. Maybe the De Lobos. Only, yeah, the only Spanish-speaking people around out west is people from Mexico, Mr. Candy Cane. Hmm. You think he was wanting to set up a meeting with me in the De Lobos? possible, but uh, I don't see the Dalobos really wanting to work with such a man. I know the Dalobos quite well. Hmm. It would be I strange. Go to the meeting anyway and find out what they want? Well, what have you to fear? I, uh, I would say, yeah, information is very important. What does he want? Who is he meeting with? That would be good information to know. Whether or not you yes. work with him, that's your decision, of course. Yes. Now, Mr. So Mr. Me. Moon, though, he's a good man. You can trust him. Yes, well, that, that was the thing, though, my boy. He's, that, that Austin, Lucky Austin and Mr. Moon, he said that them two are thinking about starting a mining 
uh, company of their own there, and oh. uh, they wanted me to get involved. Okay, okay, that is, I did not know this. Well, from what I know, Mr. Moon is a trustworthy man. It is Mr. Austin, I'm not too sure. But I wouldn't trust him. Mm. Well, like I said, Pillows, if you wish, I, I can go there later and find out what's happening and maybe come back and let you know. I would appreciate this very much, yes. And if, yes, uh, no problem at all. After this fine journey you gave me, it's the least I could do. Well, thank you. And thank you very much for your tour. Uh, I will be in no uh, contact with you as uh, often as needed to uh, let you know uh, your plans going forward, if you don't mind. Yes, I'll, I'll definitely come to that mining excavation on Tuesday, you said, yes? Yes, it should be Two Tuesday. Yep, uh, uh, 7 o'clock Eastern in Valentine. Or you can meet us here uh, a little bit earlier, like... 6.15, 6.30, and travel with us from yes, here. Yes, I'll, I'll do that. I'll come meet you here early on Tuesday, and what I'll do as well is I'll be mining tomorrow and probably mining on Tuesday as well, so on Tuesday when I do my mining, I'll bring my gems and emeralds and such here to you. I know you like to buy them. Yes, of course. That would be good. Very good. Yes. All right, well, Mr. Candy Cane. Yes, it's so much pleasure for this uh, information and your time. Um, yes, no problem at all. Look forward to the next visit. Yes, I look forward to seeing you all again. Thank you very much. I'm gonna go check my letters now. Have a great day, all of you. All right. Goodbye, Sajin. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Think. I think he could be of use. I think so too. Hello, Felix. Howdy. I think he knows to keep quiet too. I think it's good. Um, I, I do agree. have I do have bad news though. I have to uh, take a nap for a few hours. But holy cow, uh, who's... Look at this beauty who just walked in. Uh, yeah. Ni hao. So say I'll... Oh, I miss, of, of, of course. Uh, what can I help you with? I'll, I'll just uh, relax here for a little bit. I'll be back. Of course. Uh, they're a dollar mm -hmm. per piece. Um, how many would you like? Five. Uh, Guys, I have to... Um... Sure, let me get those for you now. Hmm. I have to log off. I'm going to go raid somebody. I will be back on later tonight, though. They've uh, recently been sharpened. So. Let's see. Oh, let's yeah. see who to, who to raid. I know exactly what Let's raid. I have no doubt, ma'am. What was your name mm. there, if you don't mind me asking? No, it's Zelda. Nice Thank girl. She's you. not playing uh, this. Pretty, pretty oh, nice to meet you, pretty. It's $5. Yeah, hey, let's raid Tatara. Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. Everybody know Tassara? I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, welcome to Taipan Gun Store. If there we go. Anything else you need, uh, knife Thank shop. you all for hanging in. I will be back later tonight, but I do have to go for a bit. How Apologies. Service, as always. Oh, how much is that knife sharp earning? Uh, it depends on the quality of the knife. We often will do them for free here, especially if they are. I'm looking into anything badly. That sort of thing, I think, is far more valuable than money. If you come in regularly enough, they're not into that. So true. I agree. I'd also agree with that. 